Good morning everybody and a really warm welcome to East Hampstead Baptist Church. My name is Rob and I welcome you here to Rob's Retreat. Now we've reached uh, number three in our series where we've been looking uh, at a passage I think that's going to be really familiar to many of you. It's part of a, a letter that was written by a man called Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, and sent to followers of Jesus who were living in Corinth. In fact, this letter, which is often read at weddings, is all about love. Uh, and the final verse is this. And now these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. Two weeks ago, our team leader, Simon, he was here and he was talking specifically about faith. And then last week, our minister, Steph, was talking about hope. And so this week, yes, you've guessed it, I want to talk about love. And by the way, if you missed uh, either or both of those previous talks, can I really encourage you to go to our website uh, where you can see and listen to them there. Now, like many people, I've been spending more time than usual in the garden recently. Um, I'm not allowed in the garden very often to do many jobs. My wife, Sally Ann, keeps me out of the garden. I'm allowed to cut the lawn. I'm allowed to uh, trim the hedges, but not much more. But one of my jobs is to make sure that the blue Russian sage, which grows in the front garden just out of the window here, it grows up to a height of about five feet. Um, and uh, my job is to make sure that it's protected from the wind and the storms, which actually, when they come, will just flatten it if I don't do this. So what I do is I put four canes in a square around uh, the blue Russian uh, sage, um, and then I sort of enclose them uh, with string. Uh, we use green string uh, in lots of places in the garden to tie things up. But this uh, green string, while it's very, very thin, is extremely strong because the three strands which constitute the whole are weaved together, entwined. Uh, they make it tough and durable. You know, there's a verse in the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, uh, it's chapter 4 and verse 13, that says this, A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. In fact, it's almost unbreakable. But of course, we are not unbreakable. No one, not one of us, or two of us, or even 200 of us, without God. Because without God, the storms of life will flatten us. That's not to say there won't be storms of life. I can assure you there will be. But with God, we can stand firm like the blue Russian sage. The truth is that it's God who is unbreakable. So we need to stay entwined together with him. Now that's true of our relationships, whether it be marriage, a husband, a wife. The third strand needs to be God, whether it's our family, include, of course, our church family, whether it's our friends. In fact, in every area of our lives, we need to be entwined with God. And Jesus is the ultimate example of faithfulness, the ultimate bringer of hope, and of course, the ultimate source of all love. Because God is love. And I now wanted to read to you some verses from the Bible. I was tempted to read that passage that I referred to earlier, 1 Corinthians 13, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to read some verses from a letter that was written by a man called John. Uh, he was one of uh, Jesus' closest friends and one of his early followers. And so these verses come from the first letter of John. You can look it up yourself. It's in the second part of the Bible, which we call the New Testament. It's 1 John. It's chapter 4. And I'm going to read from uh, verses uh, 7 down to 14. Uh, they're going to come up on the screen anyway. This is what it says. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his, 
Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And here, of course, he's referring to Jesus coming to live on earth and then dying and uh, being sacrificed on the cross. His atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. Can I just pick up on that uh, last point there where uh, John writes, um, we, ha this is, we have seen and testify to this. What he's saying, of course, is we are eyewitnesses. We were there. We saw it. And this is what I'm writing about. It's a very powerful uh, testimony that John writes. He also writes uh, that God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. But how do we know? How do we know that? Well, we know, we know we live in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. I spoke about God's spirit here a few weeks ago, in fact, on the 31st of May. And you can remind yourself of what I said by going to our website and clicking on the blog Power for Living. So is love important to us here at East Hampstead Baptist Church? Is it, in fact, as Paul wrote, at the end of 1 Corinthians 13, the greatest? Well, the emphatic answer is yes, absolutely. It's entwined in our purpose statement, which says we exist to love God, love people, and grow together to become more like Jesus. So here's my question for you this morning. Are you entwined with Jesus? You're entwined with Jesus in, in, in your life, in your relationships, uh, in your finances, in your time, um, whatever it is you're doing, are you entwined with Jesus? Really? Are you sure? Are you locked into him in faith and with hope? Because truthfully, your hope depends on your faith in the one who is love who is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's been said, and I believe this is true, that you can have every, every material thing in the world, you can have it all, but everything minus Jesus equals nothing. But the good news is that nothing, or, or relatively little, plus Jesus equals everything. You know, in this book, which I refer to and I, I talk about it every time I'm, I'm here. And actually, let me be clear, I make no apologies for that. I'm going to go on talking about this book because it can transform lives. It is full of faith. It's full of hope. And above all, it's full of love. In fact, this has been called a love story, God's love story, which culminated, of course, in the ultimate act of love when Jesus gave his life for each of us, as it says in verse 10 that I've just read. Once again, I encourage you to read and understand it. And if you can't understand it, then please ask for help. But, but, even more important than reading and understanding, it, apply it to your life. I can't say that too strongly. We need to apply this to our lives, especially love. As, as displayed by the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. You know, at East Hampstead Baptist Church, we want to be a people who are known for constantly and consistently talking about the love of Jesus. And because of that, a people who are filled with hope because we have an unshakable and unbreakable faith in God, who is love and whose love is made complete in us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. So now I want to pray, and this prayer that I'm going to uh, pray 
is based on the prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed for Jesus' followers at the church at Ephesus. You can read it for yourself and maybe you'll want to adapt it for yourselves as a prayer that you come back to again and again. You'll find it in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 16 to 18. So let's pray now together. Lord God, out of your glorious riches, would you strengthen us with power through your spirit in our inner being, so that Jesus may live in our hearts through faith. And we pray that we, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all Christians, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Jesus. Amen, we say to that, amen. Well, please stay safe and stay alert. Uh, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Bye for now. Shining all the stars in glory, your love is like the wildest ocean.
King 